my channel was at an all time high. I needed to focus on my personal life and it wasn't like I'm going to plan on taking a break. I just didn't have the, the focus or ability to publish a video when I needed to worry about my personal life. Like, where am I going to let live? Who are my friends? That's Brian G. Johnson. He's like a YouTube legend that at the height of his YouTube game went through personal loss and had to step away for quite a while. But he's back with a renewed fire for creating. He even created a second channel. So I'm so excited to be talking to my friend Brian G. Johnson. And you're going to hear his struggles, but then also a lot of great advice if you're struggling with just starting or maybe you've been going for a while and you just need to hear a little mm, to keep you going. So let's get into my interview with Brian G. Johnson. <laughs> Now, now, what people don't know, we were talking about this right before we hit record. I said, oh, look, you're just chilling. And you said, well, I, I'm setting up my studio yet again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, it looks phenomenal. Well, this is one of the angles that I figured out after a long time. It's a little tricky because you can see these lines. Well, the people listening can't see the lines, but the ceiling is at different heights. And it, it's just more straight lines to kind of try to get that symmetrical look and whatnot, and it's challenging. And uh, this will be the last time I live stream from here, probably, unless it doesn't work. I'm going to move this set up to another room uh, so I can have more of a big, huge open room for a lot of little angles and yeah. a lot of depth of field. So, you know, it. I don't need to do that, really. Like, I could just keep creating videos. I've got two or three great angles, but if I'm not inspired, if I'm not having fun, then I'll stop. So... You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I like you, I, you know, I get a lot of crap when, you know, I get everything the way I want it. And then I start moving things. I've got a good buddy of mine. He's like, are you changing your desk again? But there is something that just kind of feeds that creative part. So then when you're sitting down to record it, because I'm just looking at a camera with a mic hanging here, but it does kind of kind of get you going, doesn't it? Well, sure, because it's just a chance to try to see if we can make it a bit better or a new look or it's more comfortable or it's more functional or, you know, whatever the case may be. And uh, I just think that that is such a powerful place to create from because it, it, at a certain point, you know, we're going to get bored and whatnot. Oh, yeah. And it's my Achilles heel. And that I probably spend a little bit too much time now and then doing things that really don't result in me hitting publish. But at the same time, because I'm always striving to improve and I'm learning and I'm trying new things, like I've been playing with S-Log3 and new lenses and vlogging and 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 new videos and and just trying to grow and become the best version of you know myself as I can. And and so you know, some some weeks I might publish uh, or some months I might publish three videos instead of four or seven, but maybe I'm relaxing and taking a break, which we all need, or maybe I'm trying to improve. And I think that process is really, really powerful because you just, you keep getting better. I know you went through um, some, some tough times, um, a divorce, and you took quite a break off. What was that like? deciding I've got to take a break and then coming back. I, I think one of the things I thought about that I want to open this conversation with is that it it's really helpful when you know who you are and how you work and what you're like. And for me, I am excited. Uh, I am driven. I want to get the results I want to get. I will work hard and then until I won't. And uh, some people be like, oh, if you're going to take a break, you know, plan your break and batch videos and up. I'm like, whatever. You know, my pal Nick Nimmin, you know, and he's so successful. You know, he'll be like, well, make those videos and, and then it, you can release them slower if you're making a lot. And I'm like, well, for me, I just kind of want to see the results. I'd rather just push hard and try to make the needle move and, and whatnot. So just you know, knowing that sometimes I'll take a break and that's who I am and I need to get back. But I also know that if I'm taking a, a break for a while, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back stronger. I'm going to come back re-energized. Like I kind of mentioned right now, I'm, I'm reconfiguring my studio. I'm playing with new colors with the, the background lighting. I'm uh, looking into S-Log3 for more dynamic range in my 
videos outdoors. I'm thinking about being outdoors more often. Um, I'm excited about to make videos for my other channel. So I feel like a bit of inspiration is coming back. And maybe that's just based on taking a break, you know. So as far as planning things and whatnot, I, I don't do that so much. I, I, I love the fact that I am not working a Monday through Friday, mm. that I don't have a boss, <laughs> that I don't have to schedule my life like I have a boss or a job, like God forbid. You know what I mean? So for me, it's like I did not plan on taking that break in 2019. You know, I had worked so hard and it's kind of a bummer. And I, uh, when I started coming back to YouTube about a year ago, um, I was making a video telling the story of what happened and whatnot. And I looked at the graphs and it's like, man, I had these huge spikes literally within a month or two of when my ex-wife left. And, you know, I'm not upset with her and like, you know, I could have done better and we could have done better and it's challenging. But the bottom line is like my channel was at an all time high and then, you know, I needed to focus on my personal life and it wasn't like I'm going to plan on taking a break. I just didn't have the, the focus or ability to publish a video when I needed to worry about my personal life. Like, where am I going to li live? Who are my friends? Uh, where's, you know, financially, how are things? Um, and I, it's like, it's weird that I would worry about that. Like we had a good amount of money, but you don't think about it until you need to, you know? So that's just kind of my story. And the other thing I want to add, and I think, I think it's important for me to realize, and I've really been honoring that, and that is living in the moment is so powerful. And I see a lot of creators when they talk about reviving a dead channel and they're trying to get back what they had in the past. And that's the past. We're done with that. You know what I mean? And if I constantly think about the relationship I lost, if I constantly think about what I could have done, what I should have done, if I only would have, like, it's just a bunch of crap. Like, I didn't do any of that stuff. The only thing I can do is today just focus on making a video today and not like getting crazy about these results I want and thinking about the future and how it should be and what it's going to look like, but just doing what I can today to set myself up maybe for a better tomorrow. And living in the moment, you know, and honoring what I have. Like, I don't drive the views like I used to, but what I do have is a love of creating content. You know, as I sat down, I, I'm sitting next to my books, Trust Funnel. Oops, that was too ritual. That's Trust Funnel. This is uh, Trust Funnel written yeah. in Japanese. It's not focusing. If you, and is it, do you do, is this a video podcast too, or is it yeah, just no, a it podcast? is. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. So, cool. you know, it's like I have always just really enjoyed figuring stuff mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't consider myself a guru. I don't consider myself an expert. In fact, I really don't like those titles. I'm just a guy down in his basement, curious about, you know, building websites, expired domains, affiliate marketing, building a list, making money. And then uh, over time, after that was like the first half of my marketing career, then I came to YouTube and, you know, I just really haven't gone on to the next thing, maybe because YouTube is so challenging. And also it's very re rewarding, you know, and I, I love that I, I don't need to rely on a bunch of people. I can do brand deals. I can make money with affiliate offers. I can have my own coaching program. I can write another book. So, you know, that's just uh, a little bit of me go, just kind of going off, uh, on tangents and talking about, you know, being a creator and how it's worked for myself. I think that's very powerful though. I think, I think my gut is anybody that's been doing this for a while, maybe even people that are afraid to start, it's always that fear of, you know, well, what if I can't continue or I need to take a break or life happens and it's like life happens. Yeah, it's it's gonna happen. <laughs> like, yeah, you will absolutely need to take a break. Number one, and yeah. and something will happen. And, and it's like, but you're not a brain surgeon. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, for me, it's just really rewarding being in this community and seeing people go through the ups and downs and success. And and Kevin, right now, let me just say congratulations. Your channel is really taking off. Thanks. And um. You always say things like, I can't believe this is happening, or I never would imagine it. And I'm not sure why, because you're really very good. 
well, just a little feedback. I, I appreciate that. There's a couple of things I want to talk about, but I want to I want to get I want to talk about the break again because I from what I gathered during the break, um, that's when you really found a love for photography, mm, and maybe yeah. you always had it, but you dove in and and look, I've seen some of your photography. Mm. Holy crap! It's mm. it's like Thank gallery. You. It's like gallery stuff. Well, hold on. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I've been to some nice galleries. So, so talk a little about that because again, you know, maybe you were going to go that path anyway. But but I sense from outside looking in, it lit that fire for photography. And so now you've got that as well. So just talk a little <clears> about that. Well, it's actually a good a kind of a segue from the beginning conversation with the break. You know, so I. I'm going through this divorce and the thought of stepping in front of a camera. And I don't consider myself a guru or an expert, but at the same time, I've spoken at most of the big conferences and I do have a silver play button and people look to me for advice. So it's kind of like a double edged sword, you know, and stepping in front of the camera when you're just kind of down and out, I just needed to focus on myself and I've always loved nature and I've always loved going for a walk in the woods. And you know, what's really amazing about YouTube and is that this is all it takes. Like my first videos were filmed on a phone on purpose. So I could sit in this interview, you know, nine, eight, eight years later and say, I started on a phone and some of those videos drove literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. Um, the, the phones are plenty good, but again, that curiosity, I've always been so curious. Like, how does it work? You know, so I bought a, a little camera and another little camera, and then I buy a full frame camera, A7S III that I'm live streaming with. And I thought, well, now I can get interchangeable lenses. And I got a, a, a very che cheap camera, I think $900, but it had like a 500 millimeter uh, a, a reach. So, you know, this is 24 millimeters. Imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 13 times this, you can really zoom in. And there was something really magical about that. It's one of the things about my photography that I like to think about is I want to capture something that people no normally would not see or to display something in a way that is like, wow, that's what an osprey looks like diving into the water <laughs> or yeah. emer uh, 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 emerging from the water with a fish and whatnot. And looking through that viewfinder, so I have this new full frame camera and the viewfinder is like the highest viewfinder, highest quality. It's like looking through a window. And when I peek through and I was able to zoom in on these birds and then slow motion and photography. And that was such a beautiful thing to be excited about. And it started right at the end of my marriage. And then when my marriage ended, I decided, you know, I really enjoy this and I'll just, I'm going to take my camera and I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to sell a photo. I'm not going to create a video for YouTube. I'm just going to take some stuff for myself. I'm just, I just want to create again. It's kind of like, you know, writing a book or just, I just always want to create. And, and I, I didn't have my heart was not in YouTube just because mm -hmm. I was rediscovering myself, rebuilding right. my life, my friend network, moving to a new home, uh, you know, setting up the studio 13 times and now the 14th time. And as I went through that process, it's a lot of stress, you know, to go through a divorce. We were together for 24 years and, and, you know, we all know the benefits of being outdoors and walking especially in nature. So I could do that, which was good for me to just take a break, uh, a healthy break. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and also I could capture photos. So that's how it started. And I just, I, you know, I kept upgrading and I got a very expensive, uh, full frame camera that, that does it all. It's great at video and it's great at photography and it's 50 megapixels and it shoots 30 photos a second. Wow. Like it's ridic ridiculous. Um, and then I got a, a big lens, and then a year ago, I got the best, like a twelve thousand dollar, six hundred millimeter f four uh, photography lens, and I definitely can see the difference, especially like low light conditions and whatnot. But boy, did I need to buy that? No, but um, it's okay though. I love having it, yeah. and 
it was like an investment in, in going out and doing wildlife photography. So that's kind of how I got into that, you know? Um, and then along the way, I thought maybe I should launch uh, a channel on photography. And I did that. And that's kind of how I found my way back to really making videos at a higher level, you know, videos that satisfy the need to create. And uh, when I started the photography channel, that was probably like a year, year, two years ago or so. And it took me maybe two years ago, I started that channel. And it took me about a year to go through this process where they were, I was just making videos for fun. But sure enough, you know, 20,000 views, 50,000 exactly. views, brand new channel. And I was just interested in macro photography. And those videos did very well. And that was kind of the springboard. And fast forward another six to nine months. And I remember feeling, I think it's time to play at the, at the level I can play. And I guess that's the thing in all of us that I can tell you if you're listening to this or watching this podcast and you're thinking, you know, I really want to do YouTube, but I'm not sure. The thing I can tell you, and I want to encourage you, you know, I, who, you're going to do what you're going to do. But for me personally, I feel the most alive when I'm playing at the level I can play. And because I'm always so curious and trying to learn and S log three and long lenses and photography and white balance and exposure and different types of lights. It's like along the way you pick up so much information. And, you know, when I was publishing videos to my primary channel during the breakup, I wasn't playing at a hundred percent. I was at 50%, you know, it wasn't like launching a video. It was more like a lob. It's like, okay, let's see how that thing, you know, and that, that's, that's all I had. Um, but eventually, if you really, truly want it badly enough, I think what happens is your output will match the words coming out of your mouth. You know, a lot of people say they want it. Like, I'd love to lose 10 pounds, but I'm not exercising as often as I should. You know, it's just how life is. So, so for me, that's kind of how, you know, the photography and YouTube and all of that kind of ties ties in together. Yeah, I just wanted to pop in for a second and say, have you ever thought about starting your own video podcast? Well, if you have and you don't know where to start, <laughs> there's a book about that. Yeah, this is the book I co-wrote with my buddy Ross Brand, Video Podcasting Made Easy. It takes you through everything you need to know to start your very own video podcast. You can pick it up on Amazon. There's a link down in the description. So I hope you get it. If you do, let me know what you think. And now back to the show. Why did you first get on YouTube? I mean, what what got you to say, you know, I think I'm going to do YouTube. I'm going to do videos and stuff like that. What what what? Well, what got that? it goes back to this book that I mentioned. So in 20, is it 20, I guess 2015, I launched this book, Trust Funnel. And this book took a while to write. It took me about nine months to write. It was, that was my project. You know, I wasn't concerned about like, you know, promoting stuff. I was just writing a book and doing offers when I wanted to. And I had an email list and, and I was kind of just sharing what I'd learned about being a successful internet marketer. And nine months is a long time, you know, that's especially for a marketer to spend on one project. And then I ended up uh, meeting with a publisher and uh, Morgan James, and I, I signed with them. And I'm like, okay, the book's done and we got the cover and we've gone through this process. You know, when, when are we going to launch this? And the answer I got back was like, oh, probably nine months or so. And I'm like, wow. They said, well, you know, we can't, the earliest we could launch is maybe six or a six weeks, seven weeks. And that would be the middle of summer. And then it's fall and it's competitive. And a month later, it's heading into Christmas. It's the most competitive time. So we'll wait till after Christmas, maybe give people a month to get kind of back into the swing of things. So February. And um, so that was kind of a, wow. an interesting time too. And then I started making videos on my phone for my, my marketing stuff. And as far as entry into YouTube and whatnot, I had always been heavy on, on video, but it was more like film a video on my phone. I don't know anything about making good videos, uh, but I just want to be on video and I want to leverage the power of just putting myself on video. And, and then I would pop it on my website, you know, you did, 
I remember when I was first starting, it was very challenging to do video because of the bandwidth and mm -hmm. YouTube simplified it. You know, you don't have to pay and worry about bandwidth and storage and video files. Um, so I started kind of leaning into like just creating these videos, talking about the book, had this amazing book launch, it was shared by hundreds and hundreds of people. Wow. And then when that was, when I was done with that, I kind of, you know, asked myself, well, what do I do now? And by this time I had done, goodness, uh, list building, affiliate marketing, expired domain names, uh, self-publishing, uh, speaking. And I'd been playing with video, but I never really focused on YouTube. I thought, well, again, just that curiosity that I've always had, you know, I'm a curious guy. And I thought, well, that would be kind of a fun project. And I could kind of you know, share and document my, my journey. And, and that's, that's how it started. And like I said, that's, so I just kind of started with what I had and that was my phone and I made videos on my phone and, and they were really bad. I remember my white, you know, you know, that the look, the Apple look of 10 years ago, like the sterile oh, yeah. white background. Well, mine yeah. was pink because I didn't have an exposed, right. <laughs> But that was okay. Like yeah. I was learning, you know, and my audio was horrible. It was so echoey. And uh, again, that's just the process that we all go, go through uh, or we quit. It's, yeah. or we don't start. You yeah. know, it's like, I mean, that's, so that's huge that you even started though. Cause I, I think, I think you're right on. I think, I think there's too many people that just, they keep talking about it. They keep talking about it. They keep talking about it. the excuses and the reasons they can't. Some are legit, but most aren't just outweighs it. And then after a while, they just, they don't do anything rather than yeah. just like plow through and I'll kind of figure it out as I go. Yeah, exactly. It's, I've kind of been thinking about that plow through it and figure it out as I go. Um, I've been kind of teaching and sharing that simplifying YouTube and, and what uh, creates a successful video is really not that complex. It, it's not. And yet there are so many questions about when should I upload my video? What day should I publish? And how does the algorithm work? And I think if we just get back to the basics of what makes a great video, so a good topic, sure, the thumbnail is important, but if people don't watch, mm. they're not going to subscribe. You know, Mr. Beast says, well, if people don't click, they don't watch. Yeah, but if people click and they click off in 30 seconds because your video is a mess, well, that doesn't matter either. And so for me, like, as I started learning about YouTube, I remember some of the first videos that did well for my channel were about the algorithm, which is kind of like, if I think about like YouTube education, it's kind of like how, how to get views is at the top for potential to drive views and how to get subscribers. And maybe the third level would be a YouTube algorithm. And I was very fascinated by that. And I was interested and I, I did a ton of research and testing and and I, I started to get very confident in understanding this is exactly how it works. And I got to this place where it's like, okay, we don't have to worry about it anymore. I've made a bunch of videos. This is what we do. And I kind of let go of that. And I wanted to teach more about the fundamentals of great video creating. But interestingly, the audience is not interested in that. <laughs> um, you know, they want to know, well, what is it about the algorithm? We'll make a great video, have a good thumbnail, have a good topic work on your communication. You know, I know that when I started, I was quirky and weird and it was fun, but it was very uh, pistachio ice cream. It was uh, a niche ice cream. It was a niche in a, in a niche. You know, I was uh, the kind of creator that people loved or hated. And I taught myself how to communicate in a way that connected with a broader audience, you know. And um, these are the things for me that I focus on. So when you say, you know, I'm going to learn as I go. I think oftentimes people get so hung up on, I'm going to try to learn everything and perfect everything and study. And you can't like, there's just so many things you're going to screw up. It's like, no matter what you do and how much you study, I guarantee like your first 50 videos, 20 of them, there will be issues that you cannot foresee. But instead, if you just make a video and say, well, what's one little thing I can improve next mm -hmm. time? And then you make that video and you're just like, well, what's one more thing? I can? And maybe it's not the net. There's a different thing. Maybe your audio sucks for 20 videos, but eventually it improves. And mm -hmm. once you do that, you go to the next thing and you learn about editing and you go to the next thing and, and you fix it as you go. And it's such a powerful 
concept, you know. Can you walk us through what your process is right now? Which I, I assume has changed. Maybe it hasn't, but what's your process right now of how you make YouTube videos? You know what's really interesting is in the past, when I was at my high point, I really scripted out a lot of videos were pretty much word for word. Now I never read from a teleprompter. If you use a teleprompter, I think that's awesome. Try different things. I can't tell you the viewer, you know, what's going to work best for you. But I can tell for me, I just feel better when I'm communicating like I'm communicating to a friend or I'm standing on stage presenting. And um, so when I started, I, I did that. And that was one of the ways in which I made videos. I would sit down and I would write. And most days I would write for an hour to two hours a day, three to four days a week. And I know a lot of people are like, I don't, that's not, that's not YouTube. YouTube is shooting videos. True. And the other type of videos I do and did were based on very rough bullet points. Um, YouTube algorithm, it's about engagement. Engagement is people subscribing. It's about uh, people watching longer. It's about click-through rate. It's about people watching more videos when they find your channel. And I can come up with a bunch of bullet points very quickly or... I literally go to chat GTP or GPT or whatever the heck it's called. Whatever. And I, yeah. I will start a conversation. I'm like, I'm thinking of this video. Like I just did this the other day. Oh, let's make a video about when it's time to quit. Give me 20 talking points. Now I can come up with the talking points, but it, that'll take me 30 minutes. I can get the same talking points or ones I didn't even think about that. I'm like, that's a great topic. And I can get them in less than a minute. And then I've got talking points. I sit in front of the camera and I just riff. And what's interesting is some of the videos that have done the best have been somewhere between both of those styles where I kind of script word for word. And yet I, I go just from bullet points and both have worked well for me. Both styles have driven lots of views and whatnot. But I think the thing that I want to share with people that are just getting started is there's a lot of power in publishing a lot of videos quickly, as long as you're aware that I do want to make those micro adjustments as I go. Because basically, if you're not growing, then the audience isn't latching on and digging what you're laying down. And we want to figure out why. So I remember for me in the beginning, I was like, you know, I'm noticing that a lot of the most successful creators are not quite as wacky as I am. Now, people love that, but I wonder if they would still love a more serious type of a video, and they did, you know? So, so by working fast and trying to make these micro adjustments and improvements, it's powerful because we learn quickly, and then at the same time, now and then slowing down and trying to hit it out of the park. Now, if you try to hit, here's what's interesting. Like, I know a lot of creators that the only thing they do is the first style, bullet points, talking points. They know their subject well. They don't need to script everything. It's a little rough. It's a little unpolished. And that's what YouTube really is at its core. Mm. Now, there's plenty of videos and creators that are very polished, but there will always be room for people that grab their phone and they're not sure about all the fanciness, but they have something to share inside them that resonates with people. You know, the biggest thing is, is you, you know, YouTube. It's the most important thing. So I think for me, that's, you know, how I'm making videos today is an awful lot of them are just kind of riffing. And, and at the same time, like I really had a hard time uh, three or four or five days ago. I, uh, I just was kind of in this funky place again and, and it was hard to make videos and I didn't. And then I came back and now I've shot a video, I think three days in a row and today I'm just, I'm not shooting, but I have a, you know, one to publish in a few days and, and I'm working on the, the backdrop again. And, um, you know, over time you'll get there as long as you're publishing on a regular basis, you'll get there. So that's, that's what I try to honor. You know what I mean? And the other thing I'll say, the, the last thing is I kind of feel a little different today because maybe because I've climbed the mountain, mm. um, Maybe I shouldn't feel that way. Maybe I should be like, oh, I need 20 million views and I need 500,000 subscribers. Um, I don't have the burning desire that I once did, but I still seem to be publishing videos 
fairly regularly. You know, I did take two months off. I had COVID. I went on a vacation. I, I took some time off. But, you know, for six months, I was publishing two videos a, a week and whatnot. So anyway, I kind of just a little tired. So who knows if I'm sticking to the topic, I'm just kind of riffing here, Kevin. No. I, and I'm glad you mentioned that last part because I, you had posted something the other day and I saw it and I, I pulled it off and you'd said, if you struggle to put yourself on camera, me too. In fact, this last week, I really had a hard time getting in front of the camera. And this is what I want everybody to hear. That's after some 800 videos and 13 million YouTube views. So what I think you just said, I don't want anybody to, to gloss over is that, you know, it can happen to anybody at any stage in this that sometimes you're just like, I just I don't feel it today. So I'm yeah. glad you shared that. Uh, how about you, Kevin? Oh, yeah, look, I, I have those moments. I mean, you know, I, you know, and, and we have a special needs son. So a lot of times life dictates what I'm going to do. Sure. Um, I don't live stream like I used to because it's just you have to do that. But yeah, I mean, there's there's been those times where it's just like, yeah, I just I don't I don't feel it. I don't feel it. But <laughs> I used to joke even when I worked in television, you know, some days I couldn't even write like a 10 second promo and three seconds of it was, you know, tonight at seven on the channel. I'm like, OK, I can't even come up with the other seven <laughs> seconds, you know. But I, there's been those times, and I used to struggle with that. I used to struggle with I, not getting a video out, and I've got to do this. And then after a while, I'm like, you know what? I, I'm i putting that on me. Nobody else is holding that up to me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then it helps come back. But, oh, yeah, there's those times when when I've gone to hit record, and I'm like, what the heck am I doing? I, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, I'm curious, just for the fun of it, if I was interviewing you, what would you share as far as – things that have helped you overcome that because I know it is a stumbling block for a huge amount of people, oh. you know, the fear, yeah. the anxiety, yeah. like how do we overcome that? I think, I think first of all, you have to give yourself a lot of grace, a lot of grace. Um, and the, the irony with me is I, I never had a desire to be on camera. Right. Ever. ever. Yeah. Um, I think I got the gift of gab from my mom. And I think it, when I got on radio, it helped with that. But then you add video to that. But I mean, it's like one of those things that there's enough people out there that don't really get what you do or don't get the dream. And they're going to tell you all the things wrong with it. So you can give into that or sure. you can say, you know what, I'm going to roll with this. And I just think, you know, why not try it? I mean, same thing with when I wrote my first book, I had no idea what I was doing. But I knew if I didn't get it out of me and write it, I could never say I'm an author and I could never point to a book, even if nobody read it. So to me, it's just like taking the chance. You're you're probably going to be OK and you may surprise yourself. I mean, I see these comments all the time. It's like, well, people people won't like my voice. Maybe they'll love your voice. Yeah. Maybe you just don't like it. And that's OK. So, yeah, I, I think it's just it's giving yourself grace and try it. And you may discover something maybe with like you in photography or somebody drawing or something that's maybe not even YouTube related that you go, dang, <laughs> I really like this, but I would have never known that had I not taken that chance. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love the part about grace because I think what happens is like the expectation is, is so far from the reality of the situation. At least when I look back at my, journey and whatnot, like the things I can envision, <laughs> you know, I can be pretty creative and outlandish. And then back in reality with, you know, I just got a camera. I don't know uh, about how to make it work. I remember my first time trying to set up my camera and my shutter speed was so slow and the image was very overexposed. So it was very white and because it was the shutter speed was slow, which basically controls the motion and whatnot. It was so slow that it had this dreamy kind of effect and, <laughs> and then it was overexposed. So it was white. It was almost ghosty looking. And I'm like, I'm just not sure that's quite right. I, there, that might need some work, you know, oh, but yeah. giving, but at the same time, I knew that, okay, right now uh, I am learning this camera and I'm going to spend two or three days going through settings and watching videos and it's going to suck and it's going to be a little frustrating unless I decide maybe it doesn't have to be. 
And the truth is somewhere in the middle, you know, like I'm a human being, there's going to be bumps in the road. But then all of a sudden it's like, okay, that actually is an okay looking image. It's pretty good. Not too bad. I can live with that. And then you film the video. And, and for me, that's kind of like the grace that you spoke about, you know, going from overexposed, weird camera settings to it's, it's doable. And for me, the other thing I want to share for anybody that's struggling to publish and get themselves out there is that it really does get much easier over time. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that I always try to champion is really small victories that are attached to things other than views or subscribers, um, like the quality of the video or learning editing or getting your first few comments or seeing someone return and comment again and you start to get to know people, like those are all really big things. But again, kind of the opposite of that grace is expectation. And we think we're going to set the world ablaze, which is so wrong. You know what I mean? It's like literally, it's literally like when you step onto YouTube, you are signing up to be in the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and you're a linebacker. Or are those the dudes that protect the quarterback? And those dudes on the other team, they want to kill you. And you, you know, you, you, you haven't trained a day in your life and you're going to get your butt handed to you so fast. And it's like, we have to pay our dues, you know, and, and if we can re remove the expectations and just enjoy the journey anyway. So yeah, it was cool to hear you talk about grace. That was spot on hundred percent. I was looking for something that you told me, but now I, I can't, I can't find it. Um, but I, I, I think it was like, you, you've got to really figure out what you want, you know, and, and, and who you, you know, and, and who you want to serve and who you want to talk to and things like that. And it sounds so basic, but dang, it's so powerful, you know, because then that can guide your whole direction and you can change too. Yeah. And I think, I think the moment you really start focusing on the audience and you start thinking, well, why does this creator get more views? And to me, it's so obvious. Like, I think when we want to get honest with ourselves and we look at two creators that are making the same type of content, it's easy to see why one creator gets more. What advice would you give somebody who's really wanting to start a YouTube channel? I think the hardest thing in life when we want to start something is just that, starting something. And we kind of touched on this. There is so much power in just making a thing. Um, me and Nick have talked about this quite a bit, Nick Nimmin, and he'll be like, oh yeah, I, you know, I have this little side channel. I remember, I think it was called like speed vlogging or something in Thailand. And he's whipping around on little mini bikes. And, um, but like he, he is someone that's constantly creating things just like I do. I do it with my photography. He does it with his music and, um, he's very creative and whatnot. And I think if you can just get in and and spend less time researching and more time doing. So like I released a video talking about video topics and so did you. <laughs> I, I saw you talking about video topics yeah. and I was like, hey, just do this. Go to chat GPT, tell the tool you want 100 topics. Each topic is three to four words. It should be somewhat similar to a keyword phrase. Each topic should be different and that's it. And you get a list of 100 different topics, keyword phrases, use the each topic for a title and configure that. And, and then instead of trying to find this, this amazing scoring keyword phrase, just choose one you're excited to make, make that video. And the less time we spend yeah. trying to theorize our way to success and just fiddling with things and being curious about all the tools and whatnot and make more videos faster and publish them, yeah. like go through the whole entire process choose a niche and then just go like, and literally if you are, are hell bent and you really have to do it, you can be up and running in 90 minutes. You can say, this is my niche. I'm going to do it. And then now I have a hundred topics. I'm going to make this video today. And I think the trick is that we, we interrupt ourselves mm. and we stop and we hesitate for a moment. Cause like, I'm thinking for me, okay, I, I'm going to make that video, but I'm going to eat breakfast. And then I eat breakfast and I'm sitting there. And I'm thinking, 
and I'm kind of like, this is kind of comfortable on the couch today. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and I'm like, oh, no. You know, and sometimes I'm really excited to make the video, but when we interrupt ourselves, there's a chance we might not get up and keep going. And the, the, those who win are the ones that keep going more of the time. And again, just publishing videos and learning as we go, as you, that that's from you, Kevin. For me, that is the way to win on YouTube. Look, I am, uh, I am so thankful you've been here, Brian G. Johnson. I've learned so much from you and, and anybody watching or listening to this, you know, you need to go watch him or, you know, just do it. I was going to, I was going to do some, you know, funny threatening thing, but just, just watch remarkable. And thank you so much for sharing your, your story, your inspiration and your time. Appreciate you. Kevin, uh, thank you so much and congratulations on your current success and more is on the way. Thanks, dude.